Y'all remember Power Rangers? Five teenagers with attitude must work together to fight the forces of evil. That shit? Well, take that childish, campy shit you remember it for, crumple it up, and throw it out the window. Because this Power Ranger comic takes the story and makes it way better. I'd even say this is how the show should have been. Let's talk. So the first Power Rangers we know about, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, was actually an American adaptation of the 16th installment in the Japanese Super Sentai series. 16th, bro, like you know how many Power Rangers we probably missed? But it was originally called Kyoryu Sentai Zyu Ranger. The story we got focuses on the five titular teens with attitude, Jason, Billy, Zack, Trini, and Kimberly, working together with an alien force named Zordon to stop the army of the evil Rita Repulsa. After Mighty Morphin Power Rangers first launched in the 90s, Ranger Nation took the world by storm. Toys were selling off the shelves, mad different series focusing on other teams spawned from this. And believe it or not, we still have some new Power Ranger series coming out today. They're not as good as some of the older ones were, but you know, they're, they're, they're out there, they exist. But after multiple years of different Power Rangers, Boom Studios blessed us with a comic book retelling the story in a more modern era titled Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. It was released in 2016, and not only did it give us a more modern take on the story, it also focused more on the actual plot, character development, and giving us reasonable villains who actually feel evil. And just like its show counterpart, this comic book series did so well that it spawned even more Power Ranger comics. But to keep things simple, for this video, we're gonna be sticking with the first one, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. So the comic actually starts off right after the Green Ranger Saga. The Green Ranger Saga was probably one of the darkest sagas in the original Mighty Morphin Power Rangers show. He's unlike anything you've ever seen, with amazing strength, Morphin powers, and an incredible dragon sword. New kid, Tommy Oliver, came to the Power Rangers hood, but they didn't know that Tommy was working with Rita Repulsa, and she used her evil magic to turn him into the Green Ranger. And my boy, the Green Ranger was about about it. Like, for episodes and episodes on end, my man was beating the dog shit out of all the good rangers and watching this happen on the show as a kid was low-key traumatizing like i was watching these guys beat robots giant ass monsters with their megazords and all that shit and now regular human regular human with the same power they do they came and beat him i remember when dude jumped them in their own zord actually teleported in their zord pulled up and beat they asses i was like nah it's over this should be the green ranger show fuck mighty morphin power rangers mighty morphin green ranger fam so if what happened in the comic is anything compared to what happened in the show you already know these guys are traumatized as fuck but it's all good now tommy snapped out of his mind control that reader repulsa put him on under, and now he's fighting the good fight with the Power Rangers. However, unlike the show that kind of made Tommy just adapt into the leadership role slowly but surely, Tommy's a pariah in this version. Dude is edgelord as fuck and not only does he feel like an outcast, he has the spirit of Rita instigating every single time he feels down about himself and she's just here like, yo, these guys don't actually trust you. You ain't shit. You needed me. I made you the Green Ranger. You think you could be the Green Ranger without Rita Repulsa? You lying to yourself, bro. And I like this so much better because it gives more depth to Tommy's character and it makes way more sense. Sure, as a kid when I was watching Power Rangers, it's easy to get over the fact that Tommy was just kind of joining the good guys even though he was out here beating them up the whole time. But now that I'm older and I actually, you know, want good stories, it doesn't really make sense for Tommy to just adapt to the team. Y'all were enemies. You see it in anime all the time where it takes multiple arcs to get a bad guy on the good guy side, even though the bad guy knows they want to be good. So Edgelord Tommy, as sad as it is, uh, I'm here for it. I'm here for it, bro. Just don't ruin the team too much, please. Anyway, the team is at school. They're getting their education. But out of nowhere, Rita starts doing her bullshit again. As she normally does, she summons a giant monster and it's up to the Power Rangers to stop her. Now, the first transformation sequence, I'm not going to hold you. The characters looked all right from Jump, you know, nothing wrong with their designs, but the art really pops out when you see the Power Rangers show up. Like, this looks better than the show, even though these are all still drawings. Seeing these guys hop into action, I was like, nah, bro, the Power Rangers belonged in comics. I don't know why it took so long to do this. Now, all we need is a Power Ranger anime, and I'll be happy. So they summon their Megazords, and even their Megazords look fucking amazing. But I'm gonna be real, it's not hard to be better than those awkward scenes of people fighting in mechanical suits in a fake set of a city or some shit it, you could tell 
they weren't robots, bro. It just looked mad clumsy. I think the best part about the Megazord scenes in the original show was seeing the smaller Zords transform into the Megazord. But once they started fighting, it was like, okay, this is weird. So the original five Rangers are doing their thing, you know, trying to stop this monster. But Tommy, being someone who used to work alone, is trying to handle this all by himself. So after Tommy completely disobeys orders, the team holds the monster down. They're like, yo, Tommy, take this shot. Do all you can. Destroy this monster while we're holding him down. But as y'all know, the dragon sword is not listening to your boy. And Reed is then in his air like, you're trash, my G. Get off the dragon sword. You're garbage. So after forcing it, which he probably shouldn't have done, he finally strikes the giant monster. But in the process, he also destroys a bridge that humans are trying to escape off of. Luckily, Kimberly saves the people, but this is already a bad sign for our boy Tommy. So once they go back to the command center, Jason starts giving Tommy the third degree like, bro, you're not listening to my commands. Like, I am the leader. Zordon said, I am in charge. Charge. Just because you just got here does not mean you get to take my leader mantle. But Tommy, being as Lord as fuck, just argues about it. He doesn't tell them about the whole Rita problem he's having. And in the end, Zordon kind of quells the situation. But you can tell there is still some bad blood between not only Jason and Tommy, but Tommy and the whole fucking squad right now. And once again, this makes sense. I mean, you have the Power Rangers who have been working together for a while and Tommy just got here. So there being a disconnect, especially when it comes to like game plans and battle plans and all that shit, I fuck with that. So later after this, we find Scorpina, one of Rita's top tier generals. It's revealed that all this, even the Rangers winning today, was a part of Rita's plan to charge this secret crystal that we don't know much about yet. But this already made me feel good because, yo, Rita was a trash ass villain in the show. I'm not gonna hold you. Rita's the type of villain to hear that her enemy is allergic to almonds, so she'll make an almond monster. Like, that's the type of shit she does in the show. She's she's a kid villain. That's all she's capable of doing. The fact that we're seeing Rita Repulsa actually plotting, making a plan that seems feasible is, yes, this is what I wanted. So as y'all can tell, so far, this comic is checking all the marks. Like, this is truly what I wanted Power Rangers to be. Just give me an actual villain, give me some actual plot, and give me some actual character development. And we're getting all that, and it's only been chapter one. Not even chapter one, this is like the prologue. Now we move to chapter one, and we finally meet Bulk and Skull. Now in the show, Bulk and Skull were basically, they were bullies, but they were mostly there for comic relief. I feel like they were kind of there to show why you shouldn't be bullying people because they always got shafted in the weirdest way. But the way the comic adapts them is fucking genius, bro. They are running their own Power Ranger news channel on, I don't know, YouTube, social media, the internet, whatever. And they've been doing this ever since the Power Rangers first showed up. Bro, yes! Make them more than just comic relief. This makes way more sense. I never liked Bulk and Skull in the show. Now I, you know, I, I can deal with them because they're not just here being lame. But anyway, they talk about how the Power Rangers saved the world back in the day, but how it's weird that the Green Ranger was mopping the floor with them a while ago and now is working with them. They interview other people talking about how they feel about the Power Rangers and how they feel about this new Green Ranger. And I like this a lot because people are also hella sus about not only the Power Rangers, but the Green Ranger as well. People are like, I don't know, bro. Like, I appreciate what they're doing, but I would like to know what's going on. Like, these guys don't have press conferences. I don't even know who the Green Ranger is. He also definitely tore down that bridge. I don't care if it was by accident. Chill with your Megazord, fam. Like, we're getting a different view of the Power Rangers. In the show, a monster showed up, people ran away, and then in the middle of everybody running, Jason and them would morph, and we were supposed to act like nobody ever saw that. This reminds me of the Avengers movie where, after everything, there were still a lot of people who were traumatized from the incident. One does not simply see a giant monster and then carry on about their business like nothing happened, you know? But the day goes on, and even though Kimberly tries to help Tommy feel less isolated by even inviting him out for coffee, it doesn't really work, bro. Tommy's still an outsider. He's still an edgelord, bro. He, he's trying his best, but he's, he's down bad. However, outside of Tommy, I will say I like how they show the camaraderie between the original five Rangers in the comic. Like you could tell there's actual history here. They actually feel like friends. And the biggest thing is that though they do remind me of their show counterparts, they have way more personality. I'm sorry, everybody in Mighty Morphin Power Rangers was trying their best to be 
the greatest person of all time. Everybody was a goody choosers. I mean, Jason was out here teaching karate for free, from what I remember. Here, when they're teenagers, you actually see them acting as teenagers. And then when they're rangers, you still see them acting as teenagers, but the hero side comes out as well. It's crazy though, so far this comic is showing me how lame Mighty Morphin Power Rangers was, but it's also showing me how much potential it had, and it it saddens me that, it, that we didn't get this when it originally aired back in the 90s. However, don't get me wrong, even though I may call it trash now, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers is still goaded strictly off nostalgia purposes. I can't just call it trash and leave it at that, bro. It means too much in my heart. My damn channel name is after the Black Ranger. Like, I'm, got, I'm not gonna shit on it. Anyway, Kimberly and Tommy end up going to the command center after school to do some training, which I also respect because we didn't get any training in the shows either. They just got these suits and they immediately knew, okay, this is how I deliver hands. Like, it makes sense for Jason because he knew karate. And I believe in the show, Zack did a little bit of karate with Jason as well. So him knowing how to fight made sense. There was no training arc. And here we, we at least know that they train or at least try to be prepared for whatever Rita's gonna throw at them next. But sadly, the training does not go well. Tommy assumes that he fails, even though Zordon says it was supposed to be a failure, like you're, it's supposed to teach you how to deal with failure. So Tommy ends up getting all mad and he continues doing the training by himself while Kimberly has to leave on her own. And what makes matters worse is that Jason and Zack have a heart to heart and Zack openly admits that he don't trust Tommy, bro. He's like, all right, cool, I get it. He's been through a lot, but we never knew him before he even met Rita. For all we knew, he could have went to Rita of his own accord and actually be evil on the inside, which I completely understand because they found out about the Green Ranger before they even knew who Tommy was. So to just put this loose cannon on your team is kind of wild. Also, the way he's acting, sus, bro. I could tell why Zack is sus of him. And Jason's trying to be neutral because he's a leader. He wants to make sure everyone feels welcome, but he's also like, ah, nah, you, you kind of right because he acts kind of weird and I don't know what his problem is and he's definitely not doing okay but doesn't want to talk to us so I don't know. So if Tommy was an outcast before he's even more of one now and I can't even put it on the team because Tommy you gotta be open with your problems bro if Rita's instigating and bothering you let them know. Tommy heads home after a long day of training but as he's chilling fucking Scorpina pulls up to the crib. Now don't get me wrong, in the show, they definitely fought monsters when they were regular humans. But I don't remember a time where somebody from Rita's crew jumped one of the rangers in their own house. She even threatens Tommy's mom. Hey, yo, chill lady, what is wrong with you? But Scorpina's here because Rita wants Tommy's power coin. But instead of acquiescing, Tommy teleports Scorpina away from his house and is like, bitch, if you want my power coin, you're gonna have to take it off my dead body. And they go at it, but you know these villains don't fight fair, fam. She summons a bunch of putties. I know it sounds crazy for anyone new to Power Rangers. The grunts slash foot soldiers are called putties and they straight up jump his ass and it does not look good for Tommy, bro. Luckily, Zora was keeping watch, so he tells the other Rangers, yo, Get your boy Tommy, he needs some help ASAP. So they jump in, Kimberly saves Tommy and all that shit. But Tommy, Tommy's on a mission, bro. He sees Scorpina trying to dip and he goes chasing after her. And the team already doesn't like this, bro. They came here to save Tommy and now Tommy's just running away chasing other people. Like, can you talk to us? Can we try to handle this as a team, please? But Tommy can't catch up to her. And oddly enough, before Scorpina leaves, she speaks of Armageddon coming and then dips. Yo, Rita. What is your plan, bro? Like, what are you trying to do? Like, Armageddon? But speaking of Rita, she just makes the whole situation way worse. After Tommy fucking fails, after getting jumped by a bunch of putties, Rita's like, oh damn, sorry, bro. Look at you. I bet they wouldn't have called back up on Jason because you know, Jason is the leader, but you're no Jason. And at this point, Tommy is straight up arguing with the spirit. She's like, bro, it was like, 13 different enemies get off my dick then he goes back to his friends and my man is pissed bro he's like y'all didn't have to help me i had it since since y'all y'all feel like y'all have to baby me so much why don't y'all leave me alone and now jason and zach are pissed off they're like all right nah we're sick and tired of you getting all edgelord because we're trying to be good people fuck you disrespectfully so they go back to the base to talk about what happened because all this is weird right rita has the ability and has the powers to take tommy's power coin if he's by himself so why would she send scorpina to invade tommy's home and then not make a big deal out of it you know she could have sent a whole army of monsters kill tommy taking the power coin and went about her business but she chose not to so 
there is some ulterior motive here. Then if we're talking about that, Billy and Trini come in. While all this was happening, they were looking into the dragon's door trying to see why I wasn't listening to Tommy. And to Tommy's dissatisfaction, they find out the dragon Zord is completely fine. And just like that, Rita starts talking her shit again. She's like, damn bro, so you're saying you're so trash, so garbage, that you can't even control your own Zord? Like, why are you even on this team, bro? Why did you leave my squad? You had it much better with me. At least your Zord listened to you with me. Now you have friends who hate you, a Zord who hates you, and basically nobody in this town trusts you. And this shit gets Tommy so peeved, he just passes out. And to find out what happened next, what's gonna happen with Tommy, what's Rita's actual goal, what her true plan is, you're gonna have to read the comic for yourself. I promise you guys, it just gets better from here. The story goes in a direction that I did not expect, and it's truly leagues above any Power Ranger story arc I have ever seen. However, I will also recommend this before I go. There is a prequel series to Mighty Morphin Power Rangers called Go Go Power Rangers. It talks about everything that happened before the Green Ranger came in and focuses on how the five original rangers have to juggle their teenage life with their superhero life. Personally, I feel like the art style for GoGo -Go Power Rangers is slightly better than Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. And if you're into getting more character development with the original five rangers, this will definitely be up your alley. But with that being said, if you enjoyed the video, do not forget to like. Let me know in the comments if you're gonna pick up the Power Rangers comic or if you've already read it, how do you feel about it? I appreciate y'all so much, but with that being said, be easy, stay lit, stay healthy out there, Black Lives Matter, and don't forget, you can do whatever the hell you put your mind to. All takes is practice and time. Peace out, y'all.